So welcome back to the second video on this project on natural language processing. In the previous video, we looked at getting started with NLTK. We looked at removing stop words, producing word tokens, stemming an entire sentence. Um, so now we can move on to part of speech tagging. Part of speech tagging means labeling words as nouns, verbs, adjectives, or whatever. So even better, NLTK can handle tenses. While we're at it, we're also going to be importing a new sentence tokenizer called the punct sentence tokenizer. So this tokenizer is actually really impressive. It's capable of unsupervised learning. So what that means is that it can be trained on any body of text in order to kind of fit its tokenizing into the that uh, specific specific body of text. So for this example, let's use the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We'll just show that here. So we'll import the UDHR and then we'll print out the UDHR.raw English Latin one. So this is the text. And remember, um, if you didn't install this earlier oh one too high here we go let's move this down what you can do is the nltk download parentheses click enter on that bring this up under corpora or our text packages here you can come down here and get this udhr right here which is the universal declaration of human rights all right so if we do shift shift enter on this we actually see you know this this awesome document you know all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights um, etc etc it's printed out for us so this is this is kind of how these uh, documents are going to be loaded into Python um, so I'm just using this Universal Declaration of Human Rights as an example um, we're actually going to be looking at some other sample training text for this punk sentence tokenizer um, because it is has two similar examples we have in the corpus we have the state of the union addresses and this is actually really nice because we have both the 2005 and 2006 state of the union addresses so since they were both given by George Bush, um, there are similar language in each. So we're able to train the uh, sentence tokenizer on his first speech and then use it on the second speech. And it'll actually be much better than a generic tokenizer since we did train it on um, some of George Bush's previous speeches. So here's the punk T sentence tokenizer. And then, so we'll have our train text. And this is going to be the state union raw 2005 George Bush, George W. Bush dot text. And then, so sample text, what we're actually going to be using this train tokenizer to process. is his 2006 George W. Bush dot text. All right, so there we go. We have those. We'll click Shift Enter. You see very quickly it's able to get these in. If we print these out, just as an example, you see we got the whole speech here, just like we have above um, with the Universal Declaration of Human, Human Rights. This is a little bit longer. It's his entire State of the Union. Um, but that's all right. Um, one thing you can do in these is if you right click on these cells, you can clear the outputs. That's pretty nice if you have a really long output and you don't want it to show. So I'm just going to do that. Um, we we're just looking at that example there. All right, but now that we have some text, we can train the punct sentenizer, sentence tokenizer. All right, so really simple. We'll have our custom sent tokenizer. This is going to be a class instance. All 
and all we have to do is provide it with some training text which we defined as above this is the 2005 state of the union address and so this will have this will build our custom sentence tokenizer so there's that um, go ahead and click shift enter so that's all trained up come down here we can uh, now use this to tokenize the sample text So we'll use our custom tokenizer dot tokenize the sample text. All right, there's that. All right, so let's go ahead and click shift enter here. And that ran as well, so we're good to go there. So we have our tokenized sentence. Let's maybe print that out as an example, just so we can see what it produced. So we have all of these split into the indiv individual sentences. They are in a list. Um, some of these are longer than others, um, separated by commas. So all the different sentences in this in this speech in list form. So that's really helpful. But now let's define a function that will tag each tokenized word with a part of speech. So this is the part of speech labeling. So we're going to just define this here. We'll define it as process content. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try for i in tokenized. Now let's just do this for the first first five. First, so first five sentences, because remember our tokenized is a sentence tokenizer right now. We'll have words equals NLTK dot word tokenizer. So we're splitting each of our sentences into individual words. And then we'll have tagged. And so we can do the part of speech tagging with an NLT, NLTK function, um, just position, tag, words. So as easy as that. And let's go ahead and actually print this out as well. So we'll print tagged. So we had a try up above. So let's if that doesn't work, if it gives us an exception, we'll just print the string E. All right, so, um, but this is just a function. We need to call this function. And we do that just using these parentheses here. All right, so let's go ahead and run this cell and see what it produces for us. All right, and here we go. So here we have all of these um, words in each sentence tagged with a part of speech. NNP here is a noun. Um, we also have a lot of uh, other words here. We have JJ, IN, DT, determinant. Um, so, so maybe if we just do part of POS tagging NLTK, we can get some of these um, these words here. So maybe here we go. This could be a good one. So let's try this. That way we can learn some of these, what these part of speech tags mean. Because, you know, like it's pretty obvious that the NNP is a noun. This is producing a list of tuples. Um, the word with its part of speech tag, but some of these are are less obvious. You know, how does NNP differ from NN, um, RB? So let's go ahead and and run this. Oh, and I actually don't have it downloaded. That's okay. So it's it's suggesting that I run the NLTK downloader, which is a, probably a good call. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll do nltk.download. Ah. Always type in NT NTL. Not sure why. All right, so here's this. So if we actually look back here, we 
we find the tag sets back here in the all packages so I'm gonna go ahead and download that so it's installing finished installing perfect we've got our tag sets let's go back and try to run this again and uh, see if we can get better results ah perfect so here we go so this is telling us all the possible labels we have dollar um, some punctuations we have conjunctions numeral determiner existential there a foreign word um, adjectives lots of different adjectives noun a common noun a proper noun um, a plural proper noun so these are telling us all of the possible different tags um, that we could see in this part of speech tagging when we run this function above so but here we go this is actually really sweet all of these are labeled with their part of speech this would have come in really convenient in elementary school um, but that's alright we'll use it now okay so now that we've done part of speech tagging we can move on to chunking with NLTK so um, chunking is simply grouping the words into meaningful clusters the main goal of chunking is to group words into noun phrases um, which would be like a noun with any associated verbs adjectives and adverbs so the part of speech, speech tags that were generated in the previous step will be combined with regular expressions so if you're not familiar with regular expressions in Python I'll bring in some common ones for you here so like a plus is gonna be a match one or more match zero or one repetitions asterisk um, match any or more repetitions so these these are gonna get used so that we can do chunking or grouping these into into these sample text clusters so let's I'm actually gonna go back here and I am going to copy these because we're gonna use these again so I'm just gonna kind of consolidate all of this into one cell let me let me get another one below this oh pull this down alright so we're gonna have our training and sample text we're gonna have our custom tokenizer which we trained let's get that control C bring this down alright let's actually tokenize the words come back up here oh, we're in stemming went too far let's take this bring it all down ah. so just consolidating here so that we can see all of this conveniently in one code cell and then the last one let's get our process function here we go let's take this control C bring this down alright so now we want to do the chunking so we're gonna have to change some of this a little bit and we're gonna use these regular expressions in this process content alright so we have four I and tokenized and let's actually eliminate this just five let's do this for all of them we're gonna do the word tokenize again we're going to do the part of speech tagging we won't print this out this time though so let's combine the part of speech tag with a regular expression so this is actually what's going to produce our chunks so we'll call this a chunkogram and we're going to define it we're going to use these uh, triple quotations here we'll have chunk and we use these uh, curly brackets so there's a lot of uh, kind of notation here but that's okay and I'm just gonna type this this out and then we can talk about what each part means in a second so just follow along question mark get an asterisk NNP plus an N question mark and curly bracket and triple quotations alright so let me actually uh, let me add a content or add a code cell here 
and I'll actually define what some of these mean. So that line broken down is going to be these. So we have RB dot question mark is going to be zero or more of any tense of adverb because the RB here is going to be an adverb followed by um, zero or more of any tense verbs and then one or more proper nouns followed by zero or one singular noun. So this is the chunk that we're going to be looking at. Um, this is that noun phrase with the noun and any of its associated verbs. So we're going to pull these out from all of our um, tokenized sentences. But we're not quite done. We're going to use a chunk parser. So we can have chunk parser is equal to the NLTK and this is regxp parser and then we'll do chunk gram and finally chunked equals chunk parser dot parse the tagged um, words that we have above alright and we can actually draw these chunks this is a cool feature of NLTK So we'll do chunked dot draw and just parentheses there. All right, we've got our process content here still. So we should should be good to go here and have all of the uh, all of the chunking that we need. So let's do a shift enter and see how this works. And here is actually the NLTK dot draw. So this is separating um, the words into individual chunks. So here, for example, we have President George Bush. So this is a noun phrase. Um, some of these aren't as informative. And this is actually just the first sentence. So this is going to print out all of these for each sentence. Oh, yep, here we go. Um, it's it's going to keep going. So maybe I should have said only do the first couple of sentences here. But anyways, this is a cool way to look at the chunks. Um, maybe not the most useful way to use the chunks, so we'll actually look about a, look at a little later how we could access this these chunks because um, they are stored as an NLTK tree. Um, if we keep closing this, this will keep going through all of the sentences in the State of the Union. So maybe we we don't want to do that. It also shows relationships in these chunks, which is kind of cool where they're all connected. This S is just being sentence. So this only has one noun phrase in this sentence. So instead of going through all of those, <laughs> the applause, <laughs> that's all there is in that. Um, I'm going to do this interrupt kernel. Just click stop up here. So this is going to stop it. It says I did a keyboard interrupt. Um, maybe let's just do, instead of all of those, we'll just do the first, first two or three. If we run this again, we can go through it pretty quickly. So it has all these. Um, it's thinking. I clicked. We got some applause. All right, so that's done. We did our first three sentences. Let's go ahead and take this, and let's actually look at how we would access those um, as a uh, as an NLTK tree, because this draw function, although it's really cool to look at and it's it's nice to see because it helps you kind of understand what's going on. Um, we can't really use that as well. So what I'm going to do is down here, um, before we draw these, I'm going to add in a function. I'm just going to print the or print the, uh, the NLTK tree. And so to do that, I'm going to say a for loop here, for subtree in chunked.subtrees. And I'm actually going to use a lambda function here. Lambda functions are a convenient part of Python. You might see them come up from time to time. Instead of defining a whole definition function, we can just do this quick um, one-time use inline function that we're defining. So label equals chunk. So this is saying um, for the subtree, if the label is chunked, or not chunked, sorry, if it's just chunk, we're going to do the following. And that is just a simple print subtree. 
So we're going to print out all the subtrees here um, that are actual chunks. So let's go ahead and, and take this back. And I'm actually going to up this a little bit. Let's do the first 10 sentences. Yeah, we'll go a little higher. Let's do the first 20 sentences. All right, so shift enter here. We'll see how this does. All right, and here we go. So here are all the chunks or the noun phrases out of the first 20 sentences. So some of these are just one words. Um, some of them have a couple of nouns, you know, President George Bush instead of just President George and Bush being individual words. And, and let's actually up this farther, see if we get some more. So yeah, President George Bush is a common chunk here, White House photo, Eric Draper. So a lot of stuff in here, but we are kind of able to separate out these noun phrases. You know, we don't want supreme being labeled as an adjective here because supreme is actually a proper noun. It's the supreme court. So it's good that we've got those together as well as we're separating the individual names into um, their actual um, first and last names. So that's very useful. Another good part of pre-processing in NLTK. But now we're actually going to move on to chinking with NLTK. So this is very similar to chunking. So um, sometimes there are words in the chunks that we don't want. So we can remove them using this process called chinking. And so this is pretty easy. Let's uh, take this same, same function we defined above. I'm going to take this down. Um, I just control C to copy and then control V, paste these in. So now we want to remove words from these phrases that we don't want. So I'm going to change this chunk gram here a little bit. So we still have our quotations. And then we have our chunk, which is again the uh, curly brackets. So we'll take this, but and here is actually the the chinking part. What we can do is we can define words that we don't want in this phrase by using these inside out brackets or these kind of backwards brackets. So we want to remove verbs. We'll take those out, and then we can use these uh, um, vertical bars to delineate um, other word types that we don't want in there so we don't want determiners all right so we'll take all these out get a plus there and then this last bracket we only need one and we actually need a, a third there we go so um, this is saying take this chunk um, but take all these words out of it so take out all of these uh, these um, verbs, preposition, determiners, or the word to actually is is here. So here let me let me actually pull in this comment from my other notebook that will help explain this a little bit. So the main difference is the bracket and we're just removing the chink, one or more verbs, prepositions, determiners, or the word to. So that's all we're doing in this in this phrase here. So let's go ahead and do that again. Um, and and actually print out these, which is good. Maybe let's uh, let's print the chunks so we can see how it kind of edited it. Uh, I'm gonna go down to 20 here. All right. So here's our chunk. You know, President George Bush um, address before blah blah blah. And then it prints out um kind of the chunks chunks here without out any of the editing. Actually, I'm going to go back. This is kind of hard to look at when we print these out. I'm going to add this comma in here and click Shift Enter again. All right, so here's these chunks now, and this makes a little bit more sense. We have a lot of information in there, but if you notice, none of them are going to have verbs, prepositions, determiners, or the word to. So again, just really helpful if you're trying to remove um, different words from the chunks that you are collecting or the clusters that you are building from these tagged words. So there's that. It's uh, another aspect of chunking. 
And then finally, this is actually going to be the last thing that we're going to do in this first video of this project. This is named entity recognition with NLTK. So this is a really common form of chunking um, in the process. It's called named entity recognition. So NLTK is able to identify people, places, things, locations, locations, monetary figures, and more. So there are two major options with NLTK's named entity recognition. We can either recognize all named entities or we can recognize or we can recognize named entities as their respective type, like people, place, location, etc. So and it's going to be just controlled with one simple option. So let me go back up ahead. We'll get our function here again. I'm going to just take this guy. We don't have to retokenize the words each time, I suppose, since we've already done that. So I'm going to take out the chunked grams. So let's take this out. So right after the tagging, we're going to do our named entity recognition. So we can have named entity equals NLTK dot NE underscore chunk tagged. And then, so here's the option. We have binary equals true or binary equals false. Um, that is all we really need to do. So let's, I'm going to get rid of this lambda function here and simply do a, a named entity dot draw. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. So here it pulls up a uh, a list. So you notice here that we have simply this NE, so it knows it's a named entity. So George, address, Congress, um, union. But if we actually go back, and I'm going to have to stop this here, I believe. Otherwise, we're going to go through 20 sentences. Or here is another good one, Mr. Speaker. So let's stop this, keyboard interrupt. Let's change this binary to false. Go ahead and run this again. And we'll look at the difference. Oh, we've got an extra. Mm, not sure what happened, there we go. All right, so when we have binary equals false, we're not looking for any named entity. We are, look, we are gonna actually try to label those as person, places, or locations. So here we have person, George Bush, and you notice it separated it into, instead of just George as one named entity, now we have a person with its first and last name, George Bush. Organization address, I'm not sure if that's right. Um, Congress, organization, good call. Um, State of the Union, it's also calling an organization, that's all right, it's not perfect. So this is this is a cool way to kind of pick out these different parts of these different chunks. Um, identifying people, identifying organizations. Um, this will also do locations, stuff like that. So that's named entity recognition. NLTK makes this really, really convenient. You know, perhaps you, you could use this in a situation where you had, you know, an email and you wanted to quickly um, save information such as location, date, time, of a meeting that was scheduled in that email. This named entity recognition through NLTK could do something like that. All right, so that's that. Um, I'm going to clear this output here. We have named entity recognition. Now let's just do a, a quick pass over what we've gone through so far. So this is using NLTK, which is this convenient package in Python for natural language processing. We looked at tokenizing words, um, both sentence tokenizing and word tokenizing. So splitting into sentences from a body of text or a corpus, or splitting into words. We looked at um, removing stop words, which is filtering useless data from these tokens. Um, and we did that in a couple of different ways. We also looked at training a uh, or the, the stemming with NLTK, so removing tenses and uh, normalizing the words. So stemming is a great way to normalize kind of the tokens that you produce, specifically word tokens. Um, we, we looked at um, pulling in different texts from NLTK, example text, 
Um, we also looked at using the punk sentence tokenizer, which is a trainable sentence tokenizer, which we then used um, in these functions here to actually um, d do part of speech tagging. So in, in this example, we were able to identify the part of speech of each individual word, um, the tokenized words. So we have all these different examples um, that they could be labeled as you know, nouns, adjectives, verbs, pronouns, preposition, adverbs, particles, etc. We looked at chunking and using those with regular expressions that come up in Python from time to time. So this is how you perform chunking. I'm using the chunk ram and the chunk parser from NLTK. We also looked at how you might remove some of the words that you didn't want if you and I'm not sure why these are all highlighted here. There we go. Um, we looked at using chinking to remove some of the words from a chunk that we wouldn't necessarily want. So f that is a slightly more complicated form of chunking. And then we looked at named entity recognition um, using NLTK's built-in named entity recognizer. Um, so we looked at labeling different chunks or words in, in different chunks as as people, places, locations, or things. All right, so this is a pretty good start, um, but we'll we'll actually get into the cool parts in the next video, and that is actually performing text classification. So we're going to do this using NLTK. We're going to use a linear support vector machine to classify movie reviews as either positive or negative based off some of the words or the features that they contain. So keep listening to this next project. Um, we've learned some, some good basics so far, but we're actually going to be able to apply them, apply them soon. So thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon.